Welcome to Faith in Five, a weekly video devotional designed to discuss practical spiritual concepts in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Mark Vandella. A couple years back, I had to prepare for a really difficult funeral. I, it, was, it was one of my first, and it was of a former youth group kid. He was pretty young. And as I prepared for that, I really didn't know where to go. The family was like anybody who lost a loved one. The family was just really struggling to find some kind of some kind of comfort. And I didn't know how to give that to them. So I went and did some research and I was ordering books off of Amazon. I was trying to read them. I mean, it's just a crash course. It's not something you plan for, uh, for funerals. And I found a book written by a dad about the loss of his son. And I think the way that he describes this, this pain that we feel when we lose somebody is beautiful. And it's helped me in a number of messages, but it's also helped me personally. He says that when you lose somebody you love, it, it's, there's a clear hole. There's a big wound. And at first, it's a jagged edged hole. Like, it's painful. You can feel all the edges and, and the sharpness of it. But he said over time, as you share the, the stories about this person and you carry their memories along with you, it actually smooths out the edges of, of these jagged, jagged shaped teeth on this on this hole in your heart he said over time it does smooth out and and so I I tried to help this family come to a spot where they could at least know that there was it it wasn't going to last forever this pain but the father also said you know what there's times where we we want to fight we want to run from we want to reject the pain we just want it all to go away Sometimes it feels like it'd just be easier if we never loved that person in the first place. But he said, you know, that's foolish. The edges will smooth out, but there will always be that hole because anything of significance, anything that brings us joy when it's removed will give us pain. And he said, I would much rather have that pain in this moment to have experienced that joy with that person. And see, I was just the other day listening to the radio and and I think it was Pandora. And so it was just an awesome random mix of music and a song by the Lumineers came on. It's called Stubborn Love. And I thought that was just really fitting because this description by this dad and the loss of his son was like, you know what? I know this is going to be painful, but I'm just stubborn enough to stay in it long enough to experience the meaning that comes with it. And so in their song, they say it's better to feel pain than nothing at all. Because the opposite of love is indifference. And so the challenge in our faith and in our relationships with, other as we ex- with others as we experience them, as we interact with them, as we interact with God, is we always have the opportunity to get hurt. We have the opportunity to be exposed to pain. And the great thing about the way that God loves us is that he pursues us with so many unique ways. And when we reject him, he still keeps coming back. And that's encouraging. God loves us with reckless abandon. And he writes about it, or he has Paul write about it in, in 1 Corinthians. And 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 4 is usually the, the normal kind of wedding verse. The love is patient, love is kind, love does not hold, uh, love does not create anger, it does not, it's not jealous, all these sorts of things. And it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to live up to that. But I think that verse is, he actually caps, kind of bookends that verse, that selection of verses with at the beginning, he says, look, if, if I have the ability to speak any language I could, but I didn't do it with love, then I would just be making noise. I'd be like clanging cymbals. And if I had the gift of prophecy or the faith to move mountains, I would have all of this power, and yet I would still have nothing. And then he ends it, he says, there, there are three things that will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And so I know in life we're going to experience pain as a result of loving other people, as a result of people hurting us, as a result of people we love leaving us, as a result of people we love dying. But resist the urge to run from that. Resist the urge because you won't feel alive. You'll you'll experience that indifference. God wants us to, to love deeply and love richly because that's how he created us to be. He created us to be in relationships and love relationships. So wherever you're at this week, consider, A, maybe the places that you've been hurt, the wounds that you're still healing from, and and take a chance. Reach back out to love another person. Don't build too many walls around yourself that you can't break out of because we were created to experience love. 
And if you're in a spot where maybe you, you're, you're feeling love, just dive into that. Take a chance to do more, to love a, with reckless abandon like God has. Reflect back on the times when you started to fall in love or you started to experience that because that's when God wants us to feel the most alive is through these loving relationships. My friends, this week, go love. Love abundantly and love recklessly just like your, your God pursues you. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to follow us each week, click here to subscribe. And if you want to take it a little bit further, click here for discussion materials.